Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna to everybody. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, all glory to Shri Prabhupada, Shri Guru and Shri Goranga. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on this important topic. And I pray for all your blessings um, to be able to do justice to this class. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So today we're going to be reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, um, chapter 7, um, text 25. Naham Prakashaha Sarvasya Yoga Maya Samavrataha Mudhoyam Nabhi Janati Lokomam Ajam Avyayam. Translation I am never manifest to the foolish and unintelligent. For them, I am covered by my eternal potency, and therefore they do not know that I am unborn and infallible. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Jai. It may be argued that since Krishna was visible to everyone when he was present on this earth, how can it be said that he is not manifest to everyone? But actually, he was not manifest to everyone. When Krishna was present, there were only a few people who could understand him to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the assembly of Kurus, when Shishupal spoke against Krishna's being elected president of the assembly, Bhishma supported him and proclaimed him to be the Supreme God. Similarly, the Pandavas and a few others knew that he was the Supreme, but not everyone. He was not revealed to the non-devotees and the common man. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that, but for his pure devotees, all men consider him to be like themselves. He was manifest only to his devotees as the reservoir of all pleasure. But to others, to unintelligent non-devotees, he was covered by his internal potency. In the prayers of Kunti in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said that the Lord is covered by the curtain of Yoga Maya, and thus ordinary people cannot understand him. Also in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.14.7, there is this prayer by Brahma. O Supreme Personality of Godhead, O Super Soul, O Master of all mystery, who can calculate your potency and pastimes on, in this world? You are always expanding your internal potency and therefore no one can understand you. Learned scientists and learned scholars can examine the atomic constitution of the material world or even the planets, but they still but still they are unable to calculate 
your energy and potency, although you are present before them. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, is not only unborn, but also avhaya, inexhaustible. His eternal form is bliss and knowledge, and his energies are all inexhaustible. Om Jnana Simirandasya Jnana Salakaya Chakshur Nidham Jnana Tasma Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mahyam Dadati Sipa Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Shemate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nithinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine, Nirvishesha Shanyavadi, Vastratya Vishadarine. So, um, when we think about this verse, um, we also think about how many people question us, especially if they know that um, we are on the spiritual path. Um, they ask us if we've seen God. Uh, sometimes this is a sincere inquiry sometimes a joke and sometimes um, it's challenging. So as much as um, the materialists may assume that we should have a direct line to God, and this may be literal for pure devotees like Srila Prabhupada and the six Goswamis, it's not for the purpose that the materialist assumes. A materialistic person being always absorbed in the fulfillment of their sense enjoyment thinks that having um, a direct line to God means an unlimited supply of material enjoyment whenever they want it. But to the pure devotee, um, the connection to Krishna is so that we can serve him. Whether he decides to appear before us or not, our aim to serve him is always the same. So we see that Lord Chaitanya prays, I do not know anyone except Krishna as my Lord, and he shall remain so even if he handles me roughly by his embrace or makes me broken-hearted by not being present before me. He is completely free to do anything and everything, for he is always my worshipful Lord unconditionally. So we can also understand, as Sri Prabhupada is saying in the purport, that uh, whenever Krishna appears on the planet, he is actually directly in front of people, as the materialists may want. Um, but even so, at the same time, people don't realize that he is the Supreme God. Um, uh, Sri Prabhupada says that uh, 5,000 years ago when Krishna was on this planet, that it was only the Pandavas and a few other devotees like Bhishma and Vidura who actually recognized Krishna's supreme position. Um, those like Duryodhana, Duryodhana and Shishupal were simply unable to. Vishmadev himself says in the Srimad Bhagavatam in this connection, Eshavai Bhagavan Sakshad Adhyo Narayana Puman Mohayan Maya Lokam Gudash Charati Vishnishu. Translation This Sri Krishna is no other than the inconceivable original personality of Godhead. He is the first Narayan, the supreme enjoyer, but he is moving amongst the descendants of King Vishni just like one of us, and he is bewildering us with his self-created energy. So thus being completely bewildered, um, those people like Duryodhana and Shishopal, they couldn't understand Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Um, we know that when Krishna appeared, his glories were um, spread in all directions. His extraordinary pastimes in Vrindavan were well known to everyone. Um, also throughout the ages, people were aware of his different incarnations and his wonderful activities. But it's just mind-boggling to think that personalities like Shishapal could still only criticize the Lord and be nothing good, even though the Lord was present before him. So um, this brings us to the understanding that it was Shishapal's complete envy of Krishna and his supreme position that blinded him to the Lord's glories. Um, just as the Lord is also further covered by his internal potency, as he says in this verse. So therefore, persons like Shishupal were doubly unfortunate um, that he had two coverings that were preventing him from realizing Krishna's supreme position. So how do we address both of these coverings? When it comes to envy that covers us, 
um, we are all um, in this material world because of this envy. Um, so we're in a similar position to Shishapal, as unfortunate as it is to, um, to think of it that way. Um, our envy of Krishna is what brought us here. And as long as um, envy permeates our lives, we can do some self-introspection if we have episodes throughout the day or throughout the week or sometime in our lives. We realize that it's this envy that's keeping us in this material world. Otherwise, if it wasn't for that, we would realize that Krishna is actually before our eyes. And um, that special form that is here still um, in this Kali Yuga is his deity form. Krishna is present throughout the world thanks to um, Srila Prabhupada's great efforts in establishing temples um, in so many towns and villages. So that form is Krishna himself. And even more so than um, just being in the temple, when he comes out at Ratiyatra, the Supreme Lord himself is coming to the people, yet they still do not recognize him as the Supreme Lord right in front of their eyes. Sri Prabhupada says in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the deity is known as the Archa Vigraha or Archa Avatar, an incarnation of the Supreme Lord in the form of a material manifestation, brass, stone, or wood. But in the same Lord Krishna, but even though this is the same Lord Krishna, the envious only see wood, stone, or metal when they go to the temple. So how do we overcome this problem? Srila Prabhupada said that we should actually try and see the Lord with our ears. That is the transcendental secret. Because by hearing from an authority about exactly who the Lord is, how to worship him, to please him and get closer to him so that he can reveal himself, this is the correct way in which we will be able to see him properly before our eyes even. So Sri Prabhupada says in this regard, you can see Krishna and you can hear Krishna because Krishna is absolute. There is no difference between seeing and hearing. That is the absolute sense. People give more stress on the eye. Oh, can you show me Krishna? Oh, can't you hear Krishna? This is also one sense. That is also another sense. Do you think by seeing, you'll understand everything? You, you are seeing so many things daily. Do you understand? So this is all foolishness that can you show me? Now we have got so many senses. So perception through any sense, because he is absolute, the same effect. Either you see him personally or you hear him. Rather, hearing is better because by seeing, you cannot understand Krishna. When Krishna was present, all people saw him, but they could not understand Krishna. But one who heard of Krishna, even 5,000 years after, just like we are hearing, we can understand Krishna as far as possible. So hearing is the most important thing. You'll find in the 13th chapter, Shruti Parayana, Shruti Parayana, Shruti Parayana means one who is very much eager to hear about Krishna. He's a very nice, qualified man. So hearing is very important thing than seeing or touching or smelling. Hearing is very important. Hearing is so important, unquote. So what makes sound so much more powerful than seeing? Any sound that is pertaining to Lord Krishna becomes transcendental, what we call Shabda Brahman. Therefore, it is of the spiritual quality of Krishna. This spiritual quality is able to pierce the material coverings like envy in order to reach the pure spiritual soul within and awaken our spiritual senses to understand Krishna as he is. Spiritual sound is also Krishna himself as in his holy names. And so with that transcendental medium of such transcendental sound, we can understand a transcendental personality like Krishna, which is very difficult to do through material eyes. The only way that these eyes can be able to see Krishna is if they have an ornamentation of love, as is stated in the Brahma Samhita. Pramanjana Charita Bhakti Vilochanena Santaha Sadeva Ridaya Shuvilokayanti Yam Shama Sundaram Achintya Gunasarupam Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Vajami. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is Shamasundar, Krishna himself with inconceivable, innumerable attributes, 
whom the pure devotees see in their heart of hearts with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. So without that love and devotion, this material medium of the eyes will not be able to allow us to perceive Krishna in his transcendental form. But when we hear about him, that transcendental medium, Shabda Brahman, is able to connect us with the reality of who Krishna really is. So Srila Prabhupada always emphasized this hearing. He often gave the example that when a man is sleeping, you cannot wake him by his vision. He won't be able to see what is in front of him if there's some kind of danger. But if you call out to him, his ears, which are never resting but always awake, are able to alert him to danger. And Sri Prabhupada himself, um, he always engaged in this process of hearing right from the beginning of his devotional service. Um, we know that when his spiritual master was asked to initiate him, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur immediately agreed because he said, I have marked him, he likes to hear, referring to Srila Prabhupada. Also, there was a nice pastime that happened um, when Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur went to Vrindavan for Parikram. Srila Prabhupada um, was very busy in those years with his business, but he was able to join his spiritual master. And uh, on the last evening, the devotees in the group were given a choice um, whether to have darshan of uh, the deity of Shri Vishnu or um, whether to listen to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur give class. And the choice was very obvious to Srila Prabhupada. Um, he stayed and listened to his spiritual master. So whether one is neophyte in devotional service like us or whether one is an extraordinarily elevated pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada, the process of hearing is very vital to our devotional service. Um, indeed, the gopis of Vrindavan, who are the highest of all, all the devotees, um, emphasize this as well in their, um, their beautiful and uh, famous gopi gi. The translation, the nectar of your words and the descriptions of your activities are the life and soul of those suffering in this material world. These narrations, transmitted by learned sages, eradicate one's sinful reactions and bestow good fortune upon whoever hears them. These narrations are broadcast all over the world and are filled with spiritual power. Certainly, those who spread the message of Godhead are most munificent. Therefore, these divine sounds that they are speaking about, whether it's the chanting of Japa, the singing of Kirtan, or the speaking of Bhagavad Kata, all of these are powerful enough to strip away those covers of envy and all our other sinful reactions and all our other sinful qualities and bad and sinful reactions so that we can get closer to perceiving Krishna as he is. So now that we've discussed the covering over us, what about the covering over Krishna? He says in this verse that he is covered by his internal energy so that he cannot be perceived by the foolish and the unintelligent. So who is this internal energy? Krishna refers to his internal energy in a few verses in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, um, and a famous verse as well as uh, 913, Mahatmanas to Ashitaha. So Srila Prabhupada identifies who um, this divine nature is um, in the nature of instruction in the purport to verse 2. Daivim Prakritim refers to the control of the internal potency or pleasure potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This pleasure potency is manifested as Srimati Radharani or her expansion, Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. So now we know who the internal potency is, but what does she do? She's there to exclusively serve the Lord in every way, including covering him. In regards to her service, the gopis mention in a famous verse from Sriman Bhagavatam, An Anayarad Hito Nunam Bhagavan Hare Rishwaraham Certainly, this particular gopi has perfectly worshipped the all-powerful personality of Godhead, Govinda. And Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur identifies that this particular gopi perfectly worshipping Krishna is Srimati Radha, Radharani. So, one of those ways that she is perfectly serving him is by covering him from those who envy him, from those who don't want to understand him, from those who want to deride him. She protects him that they don't understand his transcendental nature, even if he is before them. 
But if one tries to learn about Krishna sincerely by hearing, this hearing process is the first of the nine processes of devotional service. And devotional service is directly under the control of Sri Mati Radharani herself. So when she sees that somebody is trying to understand Krishna by hearing sincerely, then she herself, herself lifts the veil that covers Krishna and helps us perceive him as he is. She is personally taking care of those Hare Krishna, I think we lost the Mataji for a while there. Does anybody like to say anything about the class so far? Is there any comments? Oh, the Mataji is back. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, sound check. Hi, um, to devotional service, especially by hearing. We are directly under the protection of Srimati Radharani, who reveals Krishna to us in the correct way that he can be understood. So, um, by we are able to actually see him and also perceive him in every other way possible. Sri Prabhupada says in the purport in Srimad Bhagavatam, by his sweet will, he reveals himself by his internal potency, being sat satisfied by the transcendental loving service of the devotee. So that he refers to Krishna. He um, reveals himself um, by Srimati Radharani, being satisfied by our transcendental loving service. So this is the great wonder of devotional service. It can transform our material vision into spiritual vision, as it is also able to transform material objects into spiritual objects. So we can understand this um, when we realize that anything that's engaged in Krishna's service becomes spiritual. Sometimes we don't think of this literally. Um, when we offer something material, like a flower, we think that we're actually engaging the material energy in Krishna's service. But actually what we're doing is that we're transforming that material object into a spiritual object. So it's just that our vision is not able to perceive that. Sri Prabhupada gives us an example to understand this. He says that the electricity that comes from the power station can either be used for heating or cooling, but at that energy is always the same. Similarly, Krishna's energies are all divine energies, um, whether they're the spiritual energy or whether they're material energy. Krishna himself refers to the material energy in Bhagavad Gita as Daivyesha or divine energy. But how we use these energies is what determines whether the energy is spiritual or not. In terms of Krishna's internal spiritual potency, it's exclusively and always for his service. Therefore, its position is absolute. But in terms of the material energy, because we're trying to exploit it for our own enjoyment, that's how it is material. But when we use it for Krishna, then it becomes completely spiritual. And it is spiritual energy, just like Krishna's um, internal potency. Um, 
thus Srila Prabhupada, when he was questioned about the differences between the spiritual and the material world, Srila Prabhupada said there is actually no difference, that the material world can become the spiritual world if we utilize it completely for the service of Krishna. So we can understand from this discussion, therefore, that without devotional service and its power to spiritualize our vision, we're not going to be able to perceive Krishna. No matter how much the materialists challenge Krishna to appear before them, he is not under their control at all. Krishna doesn't have a desire to be seen and heard by people or be believed in them. Krishna is always completely renounced from everything. This is one of his six opulences. Krishna has six opulences in full, and that's why he's designated Bhagavan. And one of these opulences is the opulence of renunciation. This renunciation was what was most notably displayed when Krishna um, engaged in the Rasa dance pastimes with the gopis of Vrindavan. Even though he was um, in the midst of his most beautiful pastime with the most beautiful girls in the world, um, at the most beautiful time of the year and in the most beautiful place, Vrindavan Dam, he disappeared without any regret. He was showing that he's not attached to anything in, at all. And especially, he's not looking for fame or recognition from anyone. If not from his pure devotees like the gopis, certainly not from the materialists who want to see him for their own selfish purposes. Therefore, when he appeared as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he demonstrated the same renunciation. He prayed, O oh, Almighty Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor have I any desire to enjoy beautiful women, nor do I want any number of followers of mine. What I want only is that I may have your causeless devotional service in my life, birth after birth. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself was extraordinarily beautiful, um, extremely merc merciful, captivating and extraordinary in every way. He also renounced his young wife, his loving mother, his beautiful home, his um, wonderful um, recognition as the scholar of Navadweep. And even when he was a sannyasi, he did not attract a large gathering of followers at all. He was always completely, completely renounced. And so in all his incarnations and appearances, he is the same. However, when he tries to reclaim the fallen conditioned souls back, it's not because he wants recognition or fame from them or a large amount of followers. He's trying to reclaim us back so that he can get us to love him again for our own good. Because it's only through this love and engaging in that pure devotional service that we will be able to free ourselves of this material world and go back to him. So just as he doesn't appear when he's challenged or in order to get um, recognition, he's not gonna appear by ordinary religious activities that aren't performed in that same love that he is trying to um, help us revive. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 11, verses 53 to 54, he says, the form you are seeing with your transcendental eyes cannot be understood simply by studying the Vedas, nor by undergoing serious penances, nor by charity, nor by worship. It is not by these means that one can see me as I am. My dear Arjuna, only by undivided, undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am standing before you and can thus be seen directly? Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So these, do, these activities mentioned by Krishna in these verses, um, studying scripture, uh, performing penances, giving charity and um, executing the activities of worship. These are the most common um, religious activities that people may engage in, in order to eventually perhaps have a vision of God, because that is usually what is considered to be the highest goal of um, religious practices. So if we're looking at Krishna's statement a bit closely, he's actually trying to say that all these activities, um, which are actually the yoga practices, are when not related to bhakti yoga, not effective in helping us to see him. So let's look a bit closely. Um, when he says, when he refers to studying um, the Vedas or studying scripture, that is actually referring to the path of jnana yoga. This is the path 
that is favored by those we call jnanis commonly in our classes jnanis refer to people who are trying to realize the supreme lord by um, acquiring knowledge by studying and these are most often those who are attracted to the impersonal form of the lord and it's also anybody who is using um, the path of knowledge theology um, and philosophy in order to attain self realization so next he mentions um, the performance of penances and that is um, referring to those who are on the yoga paths um hatha yoga ashtanga yoga dhyana yoga basically performing austerities in order to control the mind and senses so that they can perceive and ultimately see the lord within them then we have um the practices of giving in charity and that is um the method of self realization that is most um commonly um performed by those on the path of karma yoga because these are people who may not be able to execute um austerities or um study scripture but by engaging in their normal work and giving up the fruit of their activities they are able to purify themselves to attain self realization and then of course he mentions worship which is common to all religions and uh, and all ashrams um everyone has a system of worshiping so even if one engages in all these these um activities in a um in in an in an elaborate way um, very intensely very deeply and over a long time um performing them as long as they're not performed with love and devotion they're not going to grant one the vision of the supreme lord um lord krishna says however that if one does perform all these activities with love for him then by that action all those activities actually become bhakti yoga that is the supreme process for being able to have vision of him so this now brings us to another statement that the lord made in our opening verse today that he is never manifested to the foolish and to the unintelligent now does this mean that if someone is not a gyani if he is not um, materially educated if not going to be able to realize krishna and of course the answer to this is no um one who is studying scripture but without devotion is not able to understand the lord no matter how long they study for and how much they study and one who may not be so materially intelligent but who is engaging in devotional service sincerely they may understand the lord and get the intelligence to serve the lord um shila prabhupad um substantiates this when he um when he had written in a letter just keep this your attitude of sincere service and without a doubt krishna will give you all in so that statement of shila prabhupad um where he says that krishna will give us the intelligence that is substantiated also by krishna himself in bhagavad gita he says to show them special mercy i dwelling in their hearts destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance thus anyone who is sincerely performing devotional service will get the intelligence from krishna to serve him better to be able to see him and to ultimately attain him at the end of our lives no matter what the educational status of that person is there's a nice past term in lord chaitanya's um leelas to illustrate this point um when he went to sri rangam he encountered a brahman sitting outside the temple um with a copy of bhagavad gita who was being mocked by his neighbors because he couldn't read when lord chaitanya asked the brahman what was going on he said that although i am illiterate my spiritual master has given me the instruction to read bhagavad gita so lord chaitanya said if you can't read why are you crying over the contents to which the brahman said i am crying because krishna the supreme personality of godhead has taken the menial position of a charioteer for his dear devotee and this is moving to tears 
Lord Chaitanya was so happy with the Brahmin's explanation that he hugged him and told him that despite his inability to read the scripture, he was actually, actually able to understand the real meaning of the scripture. So we see that to somebody like this Brahmin, the understanding of scripture came to him. And not only that, the vision of the Supreme Lord literally came to him when Lord Chaitanya appeared in front of him and embraced him. So in the Shritashwara Upanishad, this is explained. Yasya deva para bhaktir, yasya deva tata guru, tasyete katitahi artaha, prakashante mahatmanaha. Only unto those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master are all the imports of Vedic knowledge automatically revealed. So that means that those per persons who may have faith in the Lord, even if they're unable to um, completely read all the scriptures or completely understand it, all the, the conclusions of Vedic knowledge are automatically revealed to them. In the same vein though, if we are able to read, if we are literate, and if we're able to glean some kind of understanding from scripture by reading, we must make the effort in order to do so. We have to show Krishna that we're sincere about understanding more about him and understanding more about how to serve him better. And he will reciprocate by granting us his mercy. And by us trying to understand him and him giving us the mercy, this will be able to help us get that proper and complete understanding of who he is and how to serve him the best in order to attain him. If we try and cheat Krishna by um, not reading about him when we know that we can, then we're not going to achieve his mercy in order to um, achieve the most out of the devotional service that we can. We always have to make the effort and pray for his mercy in return. Um, Sri Prabhupada gave the example sometimes of the lion. Although the lion is the king of the jungle, he doesn't stay in his home and um, expect the animals to come and jump into his mouth. He has to go out and make the effort in order to achieve his meal. So in the same way, we always have to make the effort in devotional service. Even though we understand that not by our um, own efforts of trying to understand will we get the complete understanding. But if we try and make the effort to read scripture, then Krishna will do the rest and he will help us that we get the proper understanding from it. So what are the fruits of knowledge? The fruits of knowledge are the remembrance of Krishna, which leads us to seeing him everywhere, especially within our minds. This is not an easy state to attain. Um, this constant remembrance of Krishna is indeed the highest of all devotional activities. In the 12th chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which is um, specifically about devotional service, Krishna says, Mai eva mana adatsva mai budhim niveshaya, niva sishyasi mai eva ata urdvam na samshayaha. Just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me. Thus, you will live in me always, without a doubt. Then he goes on to list that if one is unable to, to um, immediately, at the beginning perhaps in devotional service, um, engage in this remembrance, um, about all the other processes of devotional service that one can engage in. And then if one is not able to engage in all those other processes, um, all the other parts of yoga that one can engage in. The point is that um, by engaging in those processes of yoga, we get to all the processes of bhakti yoga. And when we are engaging in those processes of bhakti yoga, it is also that we can get to this ultimate remembrance of Krishna constantly. This remembrance of Krishna is therefore the culmination of all types of yoga, all processes of bhakti yoga. Um, and it is the focus of everything that we are meant to accomplish in our devotional service. And it is not an easy thing. Remembrance of Krishna is not something that we can just switch on whenever we need it. Um, it's something that must be attained by constant engagement in devotional service. Sometimes with regards to this, um, people may cite the example of Ajamir, that he was engaged in um, sinful activities his entire life and somehow he was able to remember Krishna at the time of death and so he was saved from the Yamadutas. But we must listen to Srila Prabhupada and examine um, this pastime a little more closely. Srila Prabhupada actually says that Ajamir was engaged in devotional service as a youth and because of that engagement in devotional service when he got older Krishna gave him the ability to remember. As Krishna um, says in Bhagavad Gita he gives knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. So he gives that remembrance to someone who needs it. 
he gave Ajamil the remembrance of his name Narayan, so that Ajamil was able to name his child in that way. And um, because he was constantly chanting that name for however long before um, he eventually um, came to the time of death, he was actually engaging in devotional service by chanting all the time. And his devotional service was unmotivated because he wasn't trying to get anything out of the Lord. So we see that by the mercy of the Lord and by engagement in devotional service, that is how Ajumi was able to remember the Lord at the time of death. It was this remembrance of the Lord that brought um, uh, the uh, Vishnu Dutas to save him. But even so, he still had to perfect devotional service in his next life before he could go back to Godhead. So this is um, the model that there's no shortcuts, that we have to engage in devotional service with all our hearts in order to attain Krishna at the end of our lives. So this hearing process, uh, hearing and chanting must go on sincerely all the time um, in order for us to remember Krishna and thus see him within us all the time and also um, to be able to see him around us, whether in his deity form, whether in all the objects that um, we are spiritualizing by engaging in his service, whether um, in the hearts of all the living entities that we see, or um, literally, if we are merciful, if he is merciful enough to give us um, his darshan as he did to, um, to Dhruva Maharaj, for example. He says in Bhagavad Gita that such a yogi engaged sincerely in devotional service observes me in all beings and also sees every being in me. Indeed, the self-realized person sees me, the Supreme Lord, everywhere. So to conclude, we'll read um, a short uh, passage from the purport of Srimad Bhagavatam uh, 4.3.23, where Srila Prabhupada writes, it is stated in Bhagavad Gita, Abhyasa Yoga Yuktena, by executing one's prescribed duties in devotional service, Chetasa Nanya Gamina, or simply by hearing about God and chanting about Him. If one's mind is always engaged in chanting and hearing and is not allowed to go elsewhere, one can realize the Supreme Personality of God here, as confirmed by Lord Chaitanya, by the Bhakti Yoga process beginning from hearing and chanting. One can cleanse the heart and mind, and thus one can clearly see the face of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So thank you so much for your kind attention. My apologies for the breaks in our recording. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the wonderful class. We really thank appreciate you, it, Hare Krishna. Thank you for the service. Sure. I don't think there's any questions. Um, Bhaktan Kuduta Paul, uh, Ravendra Prabhu, uh, Roger Wat Prabhu, or Shyama Vallabhi Devi Dasi Mandaji, is any question from you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hari Bol, thank you, Prabhu, and thank Namaste. you, Mataji. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you. Bhaktin Kudita Paul, Mataji, is everything okay on your side? I have one question, but I want to uh, thank for, uh, for Mataji for wonderful class and wonderful bhajan. I am very thankful and grateful thank you. to you, Mataji. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much. Maharaj, if you can please end with some kirtan. We hope to hear your class again. Okay. Thank you so much. We have a comment from Her Grace Chama Valabi Das. She said, Hari Bhakabu. Maharaj, thank you. It was very informative. I don't have any questions. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for joining us. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare 
कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय प्रभु पद 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 प्रभु पद प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो नित गौर हरि बो नित गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो नित गौर हरि बो श्री प्रभुपाद की जय गंतरा